Hi guys, welcome back. So if you've been with me on the videos today, you'll know that I have been uploading pastel swatch videos. So the two previous videos to this were Sennelier Soft Pastels and the one before that was a Le Maison du Pastel set. It was the natural set. So uh, this year I think I'm going to incorporate a little bit more pastel work into my watercolors. So you can see here that I have pulled out my main regular um, watercolor palette, which is also swatched on the channel. But I just wanted to take you through kind of the process uh, of a artwork kind of and how I'm going to be using it. So you can see here that the first thing I'm doing is laying down the watercolor. And so for this, I'm using Daniel Smith French Ochre. And then uh, for this part, I'm using Daniel Smith Sugalite. So it is a semi-precious gemstone and it has this beautiful lavender grey tone and then on the right angle you'll see a beautiful shimmer. So I basically want this cushion to look like a soft velvet so what I'm trying to do is not do a very smooth wash here and then you'll see that I come in with different parts of the uh, cushions and I want the sort of angle to start from different places so you know when you see a velvet cushion um, some of the fibers are going one way and some are going the other way so even when you're using the same color you can divide up spaces or areas of or sections of your painting just with the saturation of that color so I'm also adding in some Holbein lilac here and uh, those are basically the three main colors that I use for this Okay, so I have finished the main portion that I wanted to do just in watercolor. So it's basically like the first layer. And now I'm going in with some pastel. So these ones are Sennelier and like I said, I've swatched them and I left the uh, colors, you know, the, the, the numbers underneath the videos there. But at this stage, I'm just trying some different techniques. So I am not a pastel artist, so I'm just learning about pastels and how I can incorporate them with watercolor and what types of things I'd like to try and do. So today we will use them in three different ways. And the first way is this way, which is applying them and then uh, using water to, um, I suppose, more to create a type of impasto uh, watercolor feeling i'm not sure if that makes sense but um i'm trying to create sort of a a matte velvet finish and um, build up some body and some layers on top of the painting so i didn't really love how it turned out on this paper so this is not a pastel or a watercolor paper this is the sennelier linen sketchbook from cornelison and sons so i really love this sketchbook but um this technique didn't work uh super well you know on this paper but so the next technique that we are going to look at here is just blending it out so i have applied some of the metallic pastel and then I've just used my finger to blend that out and one of the reasons that I might use this technique rather than a watercolor is just for a very soft subtle transition where I want um, you know where I I want to be more in control of that transition so 
when you use watercolor you know you get the flow and the different um, which I love but sometimes I might want to use a different technique and then the third way we're using it here is just for detail work so we're not blending it out or anything we're using the pastel and leaving that uh, strong saturation of pastel for the details So you can see here that I'm basically outlining uh, the shapes to give it a little bit more, uh, just make it a, a bit more solid. And I do have a printable in my Etsy shop, which is Heirloom Lux, and it's got a couch. It's not exactly the same shape, but it's a place to start. And I, I did it for actually for a painting, but it's a similar type of thing. So it's got the proportions and everything, and you can trace that onto your paper and go from there. So I really enjoy the pastels because uh, in watercolour you have to prepare for the painting right from the start so that you can leave um, the highlights and for example sometimes the artwork evolves and you want to add something so I will show you like at the end I add a little bit of a vignette in the centre, sort of the back centre of the couch and um, I, I like that because you can already have had your watercolour in place but if you think of something else you can actually build on top of it whereas if I was just using watercolour I would have already had to pre-plan that and pre-prepare it and um, you know if I got to that stage and I didn't really like the way it turned out I would have to kind of start from scratch so I guess there's kind of two reasons that I enjoy using these and one is um, just the flexibility that it gives you to be able to build uh, onto the painting like that and then one is just the actual texture that it brings.
Okay, so you can see I was gonna leave it there and then I just did a little bit more work on it as well. So I added a little bit more uh, blending around the top of the uh, sofa and then I also added the little vignette in uh, the center there in the cushion. I didn't really film a lot of that because I wasn't really sure how it would turn out and I think it actually turned out quite well. So I will show you how I did the a portion of the center and I basically, because this is so small, the circle's about a one and a half inch diameter circle. So I just basically used little bits of pastel and uh, created like a little bit of sky, a little bit of grass. And then I tried to sort of create some figures just very loosely. And it was kind of unintentional, but it sort of looks like a maiden standing there with uh, like a guy kneeling, sort of begging for forgiveness or for um, like you can see there. I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but anyway, I just think um, it's funny when you kind of do these little things, how they can actually kind of turn into something. So um, hopefully you can see sort of the nice metallic shine from the pastels there as well and the Windsor and Newton gold ink that I used to put the date on the page. I also have the handwriting sheets available in my shop and you'll be able to see me use those and write all the words out over on Heirloom Lux. So that's all for me uh, for this week. I hope you've had a good week um, and I will see you guys hopefully pretty soon. Bye.